you want to control flow in a cryogenic environment and you want to pay low money for what you're getting, this is the product for you. We have cryo vacuum chambers that simulate the environment of space. We don't have reliable means of controlling the cryogen flow inside the chamber. It's all controlled from outside the chamber. So we don't want something to go wrong on the inside. That's kind of why we do things on the outside now. There are no valves in these chambers that we have uh, that, that do our routine imaging sensor calibrations, characterizations, and uh, performance evaluations. So DSM has uh, pioneered some, uh, an effort to create a remotely controlled cryogenic valve, something that's really reliable, something that we can trust. We hope to implement several of these small, easily installed valves in both of the two imaging sensor chambers that we have. We've just never been confident enough to have something like this inside the chamber. And so this, this will make a whole a new way of, of operation and a lot better, a lot more efficient. The reliable cryogenic valve actuator that Dynamic Structures is developing is essentially just a valve like uh, your faucet, your kitchen sink faucet, is to control the flow of helium gas, to control the temperature inside a chamber to do testing of missile components. This topic uh, originally was a NASA topic and uh, we were trying to figure out a way to make a less expensive valve both for labs for doing testing at cryogenic temperatures as well as for the rocket industry trying to control uh, uh, cryogenic propellants. It is designed to be high reliable. It's designed to operate at cryogenic temperatures, uh, reducing uh, testing cost and testing time. The main customer for this Air Force SBIR is the Arnold Engineering Development Complex in Tullahoma. They'll be using it in their space simulation chamber. We manufacture uh, both the valve portion and the actuator portion in-house. Um, we manufacture that from scratch and so we're going to do a low production uh, run for the Air Force. It is inherently simple and the simplicity means that it has low cost and it also means that it has low failure rate. It's taken about four years from concept to where we are now and we've done that through a series of models and using those models we've uh, made prototypes and validated some of our ideas. Our models have become progressively more complex and now here where we are today. The Air Force Silver Program um, provides funds for uh, innovation, for development of different techniques, and to promote small businesses. We have these needs and we can't act on them in, in every case because we don't have enough funds, the resources, and the personnel to do these things. And so we put out these topics and it introduces people that have expertise that we don't have here. And so instead of us trying to develop the expertise here and trying to learn all about valves or any of these other subjects, we go to a vendor that knows all about that and, and they can leverage off of what they've learned. It gives us partners that, that allow us to um, you know, move forward and, and to meet the needs of the uh, evolving imaging sensors. The types of sensors we have are assets that help us defend our country. They can be space-borne or airborne, but they all contribute to the overall defense of the country. DSM found out about the uh uh, this opportunity at an SBIR conference in Huntsville that we attended and we were able to meet with some of the Air Force personnel from AADC and they had a need for a, uh, a cryogenic valve and we had had previous work in this area and we were able to uh, come together and uh, make a proposal that would allow them to uh, get a valve that would meet their current needs. I think Dynamic Structural Materials is one of the uh, success stories of the uh, Air Force SBIR program. DSM started with about six people and we are now about 18 people um, and mostly as a result of the Air Force uh, SBIR program. We've been in business for about 20 years and initially we started out heavily relying on SBIRs to uh, uh, develop our products and we now are self-sustaining and in the last five to ten years we've been able to transition those technologies into commercial products that we've been able to sell uh, and and now we are able to participate in the SBIR program to further the technology to help the uh, the military and the warfighter.